Well, today is August the 5th, 2008, and uh, tonight I visited our local Walmart here in Cameron. I was strolling the aisles and looked up and saw the new book by the infamous John Hagee entitled In Defense of the State of Israel with the Star of David on the front. John Hagee is nothing more than a Zionist. He is a part of the New World Order, the international bankers, the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers who financially support the state of Israel over there in the so-called Holy Land. Now, Pastor John Hagee also spearheads an organization called Christians United for Israel. Well, that's called CUFI. And it's working in all 50 states to lobby Congress and um, become a Christian AIPAC. Now, this John Hagee is a charismatic and um, he even said that uh, when um, Pat Robertson suggested that Israel's Prime Minister Ariel Sharon's stroke was payback for God for withdrawing from Gaza was insensitive and unnecessary um, now Peggy is in with all of these other ecumenical leaders that are that are uh, reinforcing this false um, statehood of Israel. What I mean by false is it's not anything but it's not Christian. It's a vile, godless international banking scheme that is part of the New World Order. Um, Hagee has built an impressive evangelical empire and developed strong political ties to the Republican Party since his 1978 conversion to Zionism. Over the years, he's met with Israel's heads of state. He's carving out a special relationship with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, who is once again seeking that office. And um, we see this whole um, statehood of Israel thing is nothing more than a political nightmare. Peggy is a longtime supporter of Tom DeLay. And Hagee told the Jerusalem Post in an interview just a few days before the early February summit, quote, we need to be able to respond instantly to Washington with our concerns about Israel. We must join forces to speak as one group and move as one body to the crisis Israel will be facing in the near future, end quote. Um, he says, quote, every state in the Union, every congressional district will be accounted for. End quote, Hagee added. Now, if you want to go to John Hagee's website, you'll find out that he has a special section on there for Christians United for Israel. And he's put together a national board consisting, of course, of as Hagee is the national chairman. Of course, he wants to be the national chairman. <clears throat> Dr. Jerry Falwell, of course, Dr. Jerry Falwell is no longer alive. Jerry Bauer, President of American Values. <clears throat> uh, Pastor George Morrison of Arveda, Colorado. Twelve regional directors. And then the regional directors are going to appoint state directors and the appoint city directors. Um... Now, there was a report in the San Antonio Express News that said that this is the first of its kind umbrella organization embraced by the local Jewish community. Well, wouldn't you know? 
Pastor Hagee and Rabbi Scheinberg go way back in a story entitled Our Jewish Roots. The rabbi pictured with Hagee in several photographs delivered the benediction at the first A Night to Honor Israel event in 1981 and has been a regular participant ever since. Um, this Night to Honor Israel event is going to be expanded and held in several cities simultaneously. And, um, you know, look, we're not honoring, uh, I'm not honoring people that dishonor Jesus Christ. Now, I'm not anti Semitic, and the Bible says there will come a time when the, um, time of the Gentiles will be fulfilled and ushering back in of some of the Jewish remnant. But we are not to uphold those who deny that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. John Hagee has even admitted in a very, very open discussion, and it's on YouTube, that Jesus did not come to save the Jews. He did not come as their Messiah. Jesus came to save all of his people from their sins, including his Jewish remnant. Okay, now, what's this all about? You really want to know what the bottom line is? It shouldn't be a surprise. It's all about money. Um, I'm going to have Mark look up some scriptures here in a minute, but for four decades, Hagee's message has motivated his members to give millions to his ministry. And his message has helped his non-profit television arm, Global Evangelism Television, become a prosperous, global, money-making family enterprise. Hagee and his wife, Diana, founded GETV 25 years ago. And he has a 50,000 square foot multimedia studio broadcasting to 127 television stations and 82 radio stations nationwide. And uh, his income statement shows that the non-profit organization drew $18.3 million in revenue in 2001. And um, so the, this is, he, he received um, uh, $411,561 in benefits from his little TV or personally. And uh, John Hagee has a rabbi trust, um, which is $2.1 million, a 7,696-acre ranch outside Brackettville, with five lodges, including a main lodge and a gun locker. It also includes a manager's house, a smokehouse, a skeet range, and three barns. Taken together, his payment package is around $842,000 in compensation and 400000 in benefits. That was in 2001. Um, well, this is all about money. In 1998, Hagee teamed up with the Christian filmmakers Peter and Paul Lelon to make Vanquished in the Twinkling of an Eye. You know, these people like to promote, whether it's the Left Behind series. Who did that, Mark? The Left Behind series? Kim LaHaye. Kim LaHaye made millions of dollars off the same thing. Um... Well, this is amazing that we have come to this point in our history where we will listen to one man and now he, he just finished getting a bestseller book here a while back and now he's come out with this new one in defense of the state of Israel with the Star of David on the front of it. He's offered, authored a number of books, including Attack on America, New York, Jerusalem, The Role of Terrorism in the Last Days, The Beginning of the End, The Assassination of Rabin and the Coming Antichrist, and then he recently, of course, like I said, penned that book, Jerusalem's Countdown. 
and a warning to the world. And now he's come out with this book. Well, I'll tell you what. What we need to do is we need to take a stand against Hagee. The Bible says very clearly that he is a Jew who is one inwardly circumcision of the heart. And uh, we are warned in the book of Revelation that those that say they're Jews and are not but are of the synagogue of Satan. And that's exactly who John Hagee is representing the synagogue of Satan and teaming up with Trinity Broadcasting Network and Paul Crouch and that whole mess um, Hagee uh, gleefully anticipates the death of hundreds of millions of, of people in a series of wars preparing the world for the second coming of Christ Hagee wants to jump start the war the world war as an inevitable battle between Israel and the U.S. and the alliance of the Islamic states and Russia. The United States must join Israel in a preemptive military strike against Iran to fulfill God's plan for both Israel and the West. Well, John Hagee, you're not God. And you can try to orchestrate everything you want to. God is sovereign over it all. And... Um, and, uh, you know, Hagee is an advocate of aggressive war against Iran. John Hagee's end-time theology is, is despicable. His state of, the state of Israel is worshipped like a golden calf. President Bush praised Hagee's CUFI for spreading the hope of God's love and universal gift of freedom. No, that is not biblical. That is not biblical. Universal gift of freedom is not biblical. And, and President Bush doesn't have any idea what the true gospel is when he gets up and says we're, we're serving the same God as the Muslims. Allah is not the same God. George Bush is a false prophet. So George Bush says that he, he, uh, he admired or he praised John Hagee for spreading God's love and the gift of freedom with bombing the Iranians is hard to fathom but in an event evangelicals like Hagee have been among President Bush's strongest supporters and the president is not about to abandon John Hagee now Joe, Joe Lieberman of course Joe Lieberman is a Jew he is also a Hagee fan and praised him in his last year's CUFI meeting likening him to Moses give me a break a man of God well John McCain recently thanked Pastor Hagee for endorsing him his running for presidency eight years ago um, well Hagee regards God's covenant with Abraham in the book of Genesis as granting the patriarch and his descendants unconditional title to the Holy Land well, I'll tell you what. God is not going to give reprobates anything. And, and that includes people that are spitting in the face of Jesus Christ who said, let his blood be on us, us and on our children and on our children's children. And uh, Hagee advocates unqualified American support for the state of Israel as a means of obtaining the Almighty's blessing. Look, let me tell you something. The state of Israel, the Illuminati, international banking community, and specifically the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers and the 13 families that are involved in this whole mess with the state of Israel God abhors and he counts them as the most wicked vile people imaginable on the face of the earth they have spit in his face they are uh, the, the Masonic Lodge and the Illuminati openly are Luciferian in doctrine they are antichrist they are the furthest thing from Christ and for Hagee to join 
<coughs> arms and forces with them puts him as guilty as those who are involved in the Luciferian doctrine. <coughs> if you study your Bible, you'll find that the New Testament requires belief in Christ for salvation. There's only one there is only one mediator between God and man, and that is the man Christ Jesus. And belief comes from God. It doesn't come from man. And so if a person is does not have faith, they do not believe that Jesus Christ is the only uh, way to heaven, if they deny that there is only one mediator between God and man, and if they are climbing up some other way, they're a thief and a robber. And that is exactly what John Hagee is in this book <coughs> that he has just penned in defense of the state of Israel. He says in the book that he had always been, even his father had been, a, had been very dispensational in his theology. What is dispensationalism? Dispensationalism teaches that there are several different ways to salvation. There's a way for the Gentiles and there's a way for the Jews. The Jews don't even have to know Jesus Christ. They don't have to accept Jesus Christ as their Savior because they are chosen by God. They're God's chosen people. No, they are not. Now, Mark, I want you to look up, if you would, go back to the uh, 11th chapter of Romans, Mark, and we're going to uh, uh, see what Paul has to say about this whole matter that we're discussing in regards. Now, you know, they want to try to call this... um, replacement theology and all kind of things. By the way, John Hagee would fit right in with the Messianic Jews, wouldn't he? Because they're teaching the same kind of lies and hypocrisy. Um, Now, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, uh, we're going to go on back to um, I actually want you to look in the 10th chapter first, Mark. Um, Go down to um, the 12th verse. Read the 12th verse. There is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. The same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. These people aren't calling upon the name of the Lord. They are denying that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. They're denying that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. And uh, they don't they don't take kindly to people uh, uh, propagating. Uh, the Lordship of Jesus Christ. In fact, they arrest people in this uh, Rockefeller uh, Rothschild state of Israel for for sharing the gospel. He says, <clears throat> um, now go back to uh, the ninth chapter, uh, Mark, and I want to... Uh, it's just so amazing to me that we've gone away from the gospel to another gospel, which is not another gospel. It's it's a it's absolutely a false doctrine. Is what it is. Um, they they've come to a point now where they are going to try to bring all of these people together. The Roman Catholics are going to come together with the Jews, and. Um, You know, there's one thing that's central to the gospel. And that is, Mark, go back to the third chapter of Romans, and I want you to read um, the 22nd through the 24th verse. 22nd, 24th? Right. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith, by Jesus Christ, and all, and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All have sinned. sinned. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Go ahead. Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. 
that is the, what is the distinguishing characteristic between those who are in Christ and those who are not. That is the disting, distinguishing characteristic of those who are in Christ and those who are not in Christ. Now, in the 10th chapter of Romans, Paul said, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness, and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Read verse 4, Mark. <clears throat> Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believes it. There's your scripture right there. These people are not believers. These people spit in the face of Jesus Christ. They endorse homosexuality. They endorse the false religion of Judaism. It's a works doctrine. They deny that Jesus Christ is the Savior. They deny that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he says... <clears throat> In the ninth verse, Mark, read that one for me. That thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised from the dead, thou shalt be saved. These people are not confessing that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. They're not. Uh, they're not confessing with their mouth that uh, the Lord Jesus. They're not believing in their heart that God raised him from the dead. They're denying it. They're denying it. Well, God hath not cast away his people who he foreknew. That's one thing. Predestination election. God has elected some of the Jews in this dispensation of time to come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And uh, Mark reads uh, in verse, chapter 11, uh, verse 2. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not no. according to Chapter 11, verse 2. God hath not cast away his people which he foreknew, what ye not, what the scripture saith of Elias, how he make an intercession to God against Israel, saying. Now he says, though, in verse 5, even, there, even at this, so then at this present time, there is a remnant according to the election of grace. John Hagee denies election. John Hagee denies predestination. John Hagee openly denies the Bible. And um, so it goes on in the seventh verse. It says, What then Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it, and the rest were blinded. And David said, Let their table be a, uh, made a snare and a trap and a stumbling block and a recompense unto them. Well, now we are not to be proud for or boastful because the Gentiles, the, uh, those of us Gentiles who have uh, experienced the, the grace of Jesus Christ in our hearts against those who are... Um, have turned their backs on Jesus Christ who have um, but you know what only those who are Israel the Israel of God are those who have been circumcised of heart those who have been circumcised of heart um Now, Mark, read the 25th verse there. The 10th chapter? The 11th chapter. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part has happened to Israel, until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. And for all Israel shall be saved, as written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sake, but as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sake. For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. 
all of God's elect will come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ and we're not talking about the synagogue of Satan who say they are Jews and are not. We're not talking about those who deny Jesus Christ. We're talking about those for whom Christ died. Those Jews for whom Christ paid his precious blood on the tree. And um, so one of the things that we have to be really clear on is that uh, this whole issue, this whole discussion regarding uh, the Jews and the Holy Land and in defense of the statehood of Israel, we are not defending wickedness. We are not upholding wickedness. We're not upholding secret orders, the Masonic Lodge, Illuminati, international bankers, the, the New World. We're, we're, we're actually uh, in, in uh, coming against that. We're coming against it. We have no uh, interest in uh, that's like you know the Bible says in the last days they will call evil good and good evil and that's exactly what has happened but we cannot compromise the gospel the gospel is what it is a lot of people want to deny the gospel and say well you don't have to know Jesus you don't have to do this you don't have to do that well that is not what it is taught in the Bible. And uh, we, we have to uh, constantly look at what is being propagated. Look, the very people that are associating themselves with John Hagee is enough information for me. Whether it's George Bush giving him accolades, John McCain giving him accolades, John McCain is being supported by the Zionist movement and the Jewish movement. And um, whether it's uh, when when uh, Falwell's, Falwell was alive, he was right there with him, propagating the same thing, his dispensational theology. And uh, I tell you, I'm amazed that we have come to the... Uh, place that we have um, in our society where we don't understand the distinction between um, the, the Bible is so clear there is neither Jew nor Greek there is neither bond nor free there is neither male nor female we are all one in Christ in Christ okay now Mark I want you to go to the second chapter of Romans Let's go back to the second chapter of Romans. Now, a lot of people that hear this say, oh, Larry's anti-Semitic and all of this. No, I'm not, I'm not anti-Semitic and I'm not anti-Jew. I'm, what I am very clear on is that the Jews have, have aligned themselves with a group of people that are absolutely devil worshippers over there in the state of Israel and the people that are behind it. Do you know the, the treasury of the Vatican is controlled by the Rothschilds? Now Mark, I want you to read um, I want you to go down to um, um, let's see if I can find here where I want you to uh, to read. John Hege has been involved in the Zionist movement for a long time. He's he is done great money making schemes to make money it's very evident and um, and because of that he has profited from saying he supports the state of Israel and so therefore the Zionists have given him millions of dollars to support them and the statehood of Israel 
Um, there, look, just because a person is a Jew doesn't profit anything. You know, remember what the Pharisees told Jesus? We have Abraham as our father. He said, if Abraham was your father, you'd do the things that Abraham did. Um, Now, read down, Mark, what I want you to do is in the second chapter of Romans, I want you to read the 25th down through the end of the uh, chapter. For circumcision you verily profited, if thou keep the law, but if thou be a breaker of the law, thy circumcision is made uncircumcision. Therefore, if the uncircumcision keep the righteousness of the law, shall not his uncircumcision be counted for circumcision. And shall not uncircumcision, which is by nature, to fulfill the law, and judge thee who by the letter in circumcision thus transgress the law. For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart. In the spirit, not in the letter, he's praised is not of men, but of God. These men are not praising God. They don't want to have anything to do with the Son of God. They're actually blaspheming God. That's what they're doing. They're blaspheming the name of God. And uh, we need to take a stand uh, against those who are who are coming against our Savior, Jesus Christ. We're told in the Epistle of John that those who deny that Jesus Christ is the Son of God is of the spirit of Antichrist. And that's exactly what John Hagee is. Because he is denying that Jesus Christ is the Messiah for um, the Jews. And, uh, and so we have to... Uh, we have to come against this. We have to come against this. <clears throat> and I know that there's going to be a lot of people that are going to be upset over this message. They're going to be very upset about it. And they're going to say that I am anti-Semitic and that all of this. Now, Mark, I want you to read Revelation 2.9. <clears throat> Revelation 2.9. We are living in the time when we have to make a clear distinction in doctrine. We have to stand by the doctrine of, of, of the Bible and not water it down and make it say something totally different than what it says. Go ahead, Mark. I know that works in tribulation and poverty. Thou art rich. I know the blasphemy of them would say they are Jews or not, but the Son of God is Satan. Okay, Mark, I want you to go down to Revelation 3 9. Okay, he doesn't just say it once, he says it twice. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, and say they are Jews and are not. But do lie, and behold, I will make them become and worship before thy feet, and know that I have loved thee. There's my message to John Hagee. God is going to judge you, John Hagee, for your false doctrine preaching a false doctrine and not subscribing to the righteousness of Jesus Christ and his perfect sacrifice on the cross and you will be judged for it for not only telling uh, people that they don't have to believe in Jesus Christ that Jesus Christ did not come uh, to save his Jewish people from their sins as their Messiah that he came for some other reason look God's kingdom is not of this world Mr. Hagee Christ's kingdom is a spiritual kingdom he even said that while he was down here and so this book if you, if you uh, have this book if you've gone out and read this book in defense of the state of um, Israel uh, you need to read it and you need to document every time he talks about his relationships all of those relationships with these Zionists 
and uh, how he's gotten his money from them and how they've supported him and uh, that should give your answer to who he is and what he's about Father we pray that you would take this message and open people's eyes to the absolute uh, false doctrine of John Hagee and uh, and all these people that are associated with this national organization is trying to divide into state and city groups called Christians United for Israel. Christians should not be united for Luciferian doctrine. Christians should take a stand against Luciferian doctrine. Help us to be strong during this time we pray in Christ's name. Amen.